Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video in which I'm going to use some more white paper scraps to create a card that has a faux embossing folder look to it. So this card I created earlier and I made a panel on the front of my card or a strip on the front of my card using die cuts from this die to hopefully make it look as if I'd created the raised white flower pattern with an embossing folder. I hope that makes sense. What I'm going to do today is create a similar card to show you how I do it and if you stick around to the end of the video I've got a whole load of other panels that I have faux embossed so do stay around till the end so you can have a good look at those. Right enough waffling more crafting. The card blank I'm working with today is a 5x7 smooth white cardstock card blank and I want to emboss, or faux emboss rather, just a portion. So I'm going to keep this area here blank and this is where I'm going to make it look as if I have embossed with an embossing folder. And the white scraps that I'm working with today are the same white cardstock as my card blank. And that's key really, because if you want it to look as if you've embossed one piece of card, you want the whiteness to match up or whatever color. It doesn't have to be white. You can do this with colored cardstock. For this card, I created my foam bossing with a flower die. But for this one, I'm going to use stars. So I'm going to start with my star punches. And some of these stars I'm going to snip, not necessarily in half, but into two pieces. So I can add them along the edge of that washi tape and make it look as if they're coming in from the side. So we've got some whole ones and we've got some part ones. And now I'm just going to pop some glue on my glue mat. Glue mat? Glass mat? I suppose it is a glue mat when it's got glue on it. Spread it out with a glue spreader and then pick up my stars, dip them in the glue and pop them in this area. And some of them I'm going to just touch to the edge of the washi tape. I don't want them overlapping the washi tape because the washi tape is going to come off in a bit. But I do want there to be a definite edge. So some of my stars need to touch there. I find it's a good idea to have a wet baby wipe or a wet cloth beside me so that I can wipe my gluey fingers on it. And some of my stars I'm going to have coming in from the side. And I'm just arranging these, like I say, to look sort of random. Now I'm going to grab some of these partial stars and line them up along the edge of the washi tape again, not overlapping, but just touching it so that they look as if they've been sliced off. So I think I want maybe three more of these stars and then we'll move on to a smaller size. Now I've got this star die. It makes a frame, but I'm not after the frame. I'm after the stars. So I'm going to cut that 
with my mini Gemini when I've remembered where I've put the cutting plate. So now I've got a lovely pile of die cut stars and I'm going to add these in amongst the other stars. Again, some of them I'm going to butt up against the washi tape. Some of them I will cut in half, like these bigger ones. I'm going to need some of these cut in half to make it look as if they're coming in from the side. When doing something like this, I always think it's a good idea to start with your bigger shapes first and get them randomly or evenly distributed, whatever you're going for and then you'll know what space you've got left for your smaller shapes. I think this is a great way to use up your paper scraps to die cut some shapes from them and add them to your card as a as a faux embossed look. And another advantage of this is that you can absolutely create your own design so you're not restricted to the pattern of an embossing folder. You can get that look, but you can uh, do it however you want. You can have the stars or hearts or whatever shape. You can have them arranged in any configuration you like. So this would be very, very difficult to do to emboss the front of a card blank with an embossing folder to get just this portion. Not impossible, you can use diffusers and things like that, but uh, this way you can make it absolutely unique. And also the back end of the card or the back side of the card is not indented, it's not debossed. So this is just the front front part of the card, there's no panel here, I'm working straight on the card blank and the back is completely flat as well. The back of the front is completely flat, if you see what I mean. You can just keep going with this until you're satisfied with your pattern. Once your stars are firmly down and dry, you can carefully remove the low tack tape or masking tape or washi tape, whatever you've used. And any bits of overhang, such as on here, I've just got to get this, I've got a little bit of tape inside just to keep it shut while I was working on it. Any bits of overhang, you can just snip to neaten up the edge there with a pair of scissors. And I'm going to get a bit of deli paper and give that a really good press down so that hopefully any bits of star that aren't quite flat on the card will get stuck down. If there's any bits of glue peeking out, just let it dry and then you probably, depending on the glue you've used, just be able to rub it away with your finger. And without pressing too hard to dent the card front, Along with the edges which are cut, I just like to run an embossing tool to bevel those edges ever so slightly so they look as if they've been pressed into the card by an embossing folder. 
If you've used a punch like I have, you don't always get that beveled edge that you get with die cuts, but if it bothers you, you can get an embossing tool again and gently go round those punched shapes to bevel the edge like that so that they look like they've been die cut, not punched. And you can run your embossing tool down the edge of that as well to catch those ones. But there you go, that's what you get with this faux embossing technique. It looks like these have been pressed into the card by an embossing folder. So with this card, I used some heart shapes. I cut a heart from vellum and then one from linen textured cardstock, which I'd coloured with Distress Oxide. I'm going to do much the same thing with this card. I've got a couple of stitched star dies. I'm going to cut a larger one from vellum and I've got another white paper scrap and I'm going to colour it with chipped sapphire, distress oxide, just blend that on there. And to add a bit of sparkle and shine and shimmer, I'm splattering on some metallic white paint. These are my Prima Metallic Accents paints and I'll dry that with my hairdryer. Now I'm going to cut the smaller star out of this and I'm going to add that to that with a bit of foam tape. And I think I should pop this one in the middle and I can put some glue on the back of the vellum because it won't be visible. I think that's about right. Press that down with a bit of deli paper and I've got a little scrap of silver paper here that I'm going to use for my sentiment. I'm going to cut the word thanks. I put it across the two arms of the star then I won't need to support it with any foam tape that's about right bring on the dummy paper again press that down so on this card I cut out some circles using my circle die and added some glossy accents to make them look like enamel dots. But I think with this one, I'm gonna stick with stars. So I'm gonna cut some more stars, but using this. I've just poked out a few, because I don't need all of them. I'm going to add them around the big star. One last one, so it's three above and five below, two odd number groupings. And now for a little bit of glossy accents on those blue stars, so they look a bit like enamel shapes. So with these, I put a little dot in the middle and then just coax it out without squeezing the bottle down the uh, arms or legs of the star and that hopefully will stop it overflowing. Just a little dot, and then coax it along. You can always go in with a pokey tool or a pair of tweezers and just quickly pick up any bits that have overflowed from the stars onto the card. And you can use something like a fine tip tweezers to coax the glossy accents along before it dries so there we go two 
cards made using a faux embossing folder technique. You don't have to just portion off a part of your card front or card panel. If you wanted, you could do the whole thing to look like it's been through an embossing folder. And you don't obviously just have to stick with one type of shape. You don't have to just do stars. You could do stars and something else mixed in. So now, as promised, here are some more panels made using this faux embossing folder technique. So for this one, I used cog dies. And I placed a piece of washi tape there and stuck cogs and partial cogs onto that. This one I made using these leaf and flower dies and I put a bit of washi tape here and a bit of washi tape here. And that's made this kind of, what's that shape? I don't know it's made that shape and again I think it does a good job of pretending to be made by a embossing folder for this one I used a circle die and some masking paper to cut a hole and then I filled up the hole with butterflies that I die cut using these two dies and I think that would look really good with a butterfly and a sentiment on top. With this die, I cut out heart shapes and all I did was put glue on the back of them, put this on here and then press them down. So they're in the same arrangement on there. I did a bit of a cut off, hang off thing, but it's got a heart shape made of hearts. This one I used this hexagon net die and again I didn't want their net I just wanted the hexagons and then I pressed them down or glued them down in a, a randomish fashion on here so now I could maybe have a focal point here or here. For this one I used the circle that I die cut out of the one that I did this with. So with this one I put masking around the edge to leave a hole and with this one I put the hole here and then used my circle die to cut out lots of different shaped circles and put them around this shape to leave this gap amongst the circle so again my focal point could go here I could stamp a sentiment in there of course you don't just have to use white cardstock or white scraps for this you could cut your cogs from say brown paper and your panel from brown paper stick them on and then it looks as if you've put a piece of brown cardstock through an embossing folder and you could, if you wanted, colour your die cuts before you stick them on so they've got a bit more impact. But I really like this look of kind of tone on tone. That's when it really looks like it's been through an embossing folder. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you found it helpful. I'd be really interested to know if you've done anything like this before, what shapes you've done it with. If you want to share some photos of the cards that you've made, then do come along to my Facebook group. There is a link in the video description. Just click the more thing and the description should reveal itself. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, do hit subscribe and ring the notification bell. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.